Some of my friends have asked me why I began this YouTube channel, Spirituality Beyond Borders. And some of them have also teased me about whether I was going to start doing TikTok and do some, you know, dances and things. And that's not going to be happening. You just saw the extent of my dance talent. But the reason I've done Spirituality Beyond Borders is, is because I thought that this was an important thing to explore. I looked around at what was on YouTube and, and predominantly what I found about channels about religion and spirituality, and, and there are a lot of them, was that they present a particular perspective of the way you should believe or the practices you should do. And it seems as though the creators are really suggesting that you should follow their path. So I have my spiritual path. I don't expect anybody else to follow it. What I'm hopeful for is that you have an interest in developing the spiritual dimension of your life, the way you find hope and awe and wonder in life, and that you can incorporate that within your life in ways to make your life better, to improve your mental health and your physical well-being, because research shows that happens. You know, People come at spirituality in different ways. There are those who are devout this or firm believers in that. That's perfectly fine. There are also those who follow more of what my old friend Roshi Pat Hawk would recall the pathless path. People who put together their own path in sort of an eclectic way, drawing from different practices and traditions. And that's perfectly fine, too. What to me is important is that you're doing something that nurtures that spiritual dimension of your life. Because when you're doing that, you're also nurturing your mental health and your physical well-being. It all works together as one. In terms of my own background, I talk about my background at some length in the video, Lou and His Spiritual Journey. As a quick recap, yes, I grew up in a Catholic household. My father was Byzantine Catholic. My mother was Roman Catholic. We were an Eastern European family. And there were ways in which culture and religion all blended together. And for me, turned out to be fairly uh, positive and formative and helpful. That's me. I also was an ordained minister. I am an ordained minister in a Protestant denomination. I'm retired now. So many people would refer to me as being Christian. That's not a title or a description I wear comfortably. And that's because the term Christian has been so politicized. And I don't buy into the predominant political agenda, nor do I believe that my belief in following the teachings of Jesus is anything that anybody else needs to do. That's about me. But I do understand that the teachings of Jesus, which I hold dear and, and try to emulate as best as I can, are focused on our loving each other, respecting each other, living in harmony with others, recognizing that the realm of God is within us and around us, that the teachings of Jesus are about the here and now and not the hereafter. So that's what I really hold dear. Along the way, I've learned from a lot of other people. And much of that has happened not because I sought it out so much as these are opportunities I had. Uh, so, you know, I began uh, learning from Jewish rabbis because I met them. And whenever I talked with them, they were interested in sharing more with me. And you know, along the way, circumstances just sort of happened serendipitously. That's how I ended up learning a lot about Native American traditions. You know, I was living in Tucson, Arizona for a number of years, and my home was not far from the University of Arizona. A Native American woman was visiting with me one day, and, you know, she looked out at my backyard and said, that tree stump in the middle of your backyard that's just sitting there, she said, that'd be a good place for a drumming circle. And I thought, well, I never really considered that, but I guess that's true. And a little bit later, she said, your backyard, it's really flat. The ground's really smooth. This would be a good place to dance. 
then it occurred to me she was up to something. And she was. A few weeks later, every Friday, a Native American group started meeting in my backyard. They would drum and dance, and this was a place where students could come and, and just do there and be practicing things from their culture. And once that group began to form regularly, elders who lived in the area, a Navajo medicine man, an Arapaho healer, a Ponca elder, they all began to come and stay, spend time with the students and, and teach from their traditions. And luckily I was there. I was open to having these folks as guests in my backyard each week. And I learned a lot. And the elders who came invited me to meet other people and go to different ceremonies. And it just really expanded my experience. And in that, it wasn't that I was trying to become a Native American or anything. I was just myself. But I learned and listened. And I never tried to appropriate anybody's culture. But I valued what they were teaching, what they were sharing. And I was able to see that there were lines of continuity, as well as lines of discontinuity, between my own experience and theirs. And, and that's how I've come to understand other traditions, whether they were Hindu or Buddhist or, or, or whatever the tradition was. And it's out of that that I have this sense of spirituality beyond borders. I don't look at spirituality as something within a silo or a box or something confined. It's, it's among us. It's something we share. It's beyond borders. It's beyond the confines we try to put around it all the time by wondering if people believe the same thing or follow the path that we each individually follow. Instead, there's a hard experience that we have as human beings that's part of who we are. And that's part of what I try to share through this channel, to share that there are ways in which we can positively grow more whole and more full. And we do that when there's the balance between our physical health, our mental health, and our spiritual dimension. They all interplay with each other. We know that from psychology, we know that from medicine, and I also try to share some of that research. My hope is that through this channel, you'll learn more about your own spiritual path whether you follow a particular path or are putting one together for yourself, a pathless path. One of the things that I particularly enjoy beyond this video, beyond this channel, is to work with people in spiritual direction. Because in spiritual direction, I have the opportunity to companion with people and witness their growth and the way that they integrate the spiritual dimension of their life with other dimensions. It's really an honor for me to hear what it's like for other people to put the pieces together in a way that's right for them. Like this video, subscribe, share the video, but beyond all else, explore the spiritual dimension of your life. Look at how it integrates. Please leave me some comments, give me some feedback so that I know what's important to you so that I can address that better. Have a really great day.